Guy Powell here with the Backstory on the Shroud of Turin podcast. Today, we're here for the third time with Matt Collins, and he has some really groundbreaking stuff that he's been putting together. And we're going to be talking about the sculpture that he made from the Shroud of Turin, which is really an image, uh, a probable image, of Jesus' crucifixion and resurrection. Welcome, Matt. Guy, I'm thrilled to be back for the third time. You know, I'm going, uh, there's a competition between me and uh, Russ Breall as to who can be on your show the most times. And uh, I might be in the lead, it might be a tie, I don't know. We wanted to talk about you and uh, what you've got here. So tell us a little bit about the sculpture and uh, what made you, what inspired you to to do this and, and then what's your, your message related to it? Well, let's go back a little bit. The first two episodes that, that I was on, we, we talked a lot about the sculpture that I was uh, creating. And today, we're going to do the reveal. Obviously, we're, we're showing it. it's a, a museum quality $25,000 sculpture uh, of Jesus Christ that was created here in the land of Georgia uh, by Martin Dow, uh, Cherry Line Studios. He's an expert. Or I get asked all the time, guy, are, are you an artist? Are you an artist? Did you do this? And the answer is yes and no. Uh, I'm not a sculptor, but I hired the best sculptors uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, who are some of the best in the country. And we created um, what is, some people think, the best sculpture of Jesus Christ in the world. And of course that's debatable, but there is no other one like it uh, in the United States of America, we'll put it that way. And what's groundbreaking about the whole thing, about the whole concept, is that you see Jesus in the back of my station wagon. We are mobile. So what, what do I do? Why am I here? Well, I'm a Christian content provider. And my methodology in providing the content is to drive around with this sculpture to any place that'll have me, whether it be a, an event, a fall festival, which I just attended in Hepsico, Georgia. Please ask me about that. Um, I think that small groups uh, for churches and Sunday school classes for churches and churches in general are great places for me to go and talk about the passion. We talk about uh, the resurrection, of course. I, I love to talk about the resurrection. And last but not least, we talk about the Shroud of Turin because without the Shroud of Turin, there is no sculpture. We pulled the image off the shroud to create the sculpture. And it was a vision, that a light that, that God put in my head as to, as to how to go about uh, telling people about it. And the best advice that, that one, of my, uh, one of my pastor friends told me, he goes, uh, run to the light. So that's what Absolutely. I'm doing. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you for that. So, uh, yeah, but why you? Why you? What's your background? Why you to put this together and why, you know, what, what makes you and, and what makes this so special? I get asked someone? that all the time when I go to an event. Who in the world are you? Because people want to know. People want to know when they're hearing any Christian content provider what their background is because these people, they want to know whether uh, I can be trusted, honestly. They want to know if, if my background is similar to theirs. And the answer to what my background is is that I'm a strong Protestant. I've been all my life. And um, that's important because some people associate the Shroud of Turin with, um, with Catholicism. Uh, some people associate a, a sculpture uh, with the Catholic Church. And I respect the Catholic Church a lot, but I'm not Catholic. And, you know, we can talk about John Calvin in a minute. But um, why me? Um, I would say that, that, that God is, is, is using me to, uh, to get the word out. And we certainly believe that the Shroud of Turin is authentic. It's the image of God, Jesus Christ, Son of God. And uh, this sculpture is, is groundbreaking because there isn't another one like it in the United States. And uh, why me? I want to show everybody. I want somebody to be inspired by seeing the sculpture. And that happens every time I show it at an event. And, well, and absolutely. And certainly as Christians, our goal is to not only help other Christians to improve and strengthen their faith, but also to bring new people to the faith so that they can also see that Christ died and suffered 
ungodly suffered at the hands of man uh, for us and to uh, to redeem our sin. Well, this is the uh, honestly guy and Rhiannon who's, who's filming for us. This is the cleaned up version of Jesus uh, after he was executed. You know, he, he died covered in blood and dirt and spit. And we can't, we'll never be able to get our arms around um, what happened to him and what he did for us. But this helps. And the reason I say it helps is because I hear the reactions from people that see the sculpture when I take them places. Remember, I'm mobile. I'll go anywhere in the Southeast and please remember to ask me about the idea about using technology to go everywhere. Absolutely. And we certainly have built a model that is, and I say we because because you and I have partnered on this. You're helping me get the word out. I'm, I'm, I'm new. I'm a nobody. We're using technology. We're using YouTube. We're using all social media to, to get the word out. And we hope, of course, that we're going to help somebody, anybody, even if it's just one person, get to heaven. Uh, that's terrific. And I think that that's already happened. And Because I see it when I, when I go to the events and, and get the kind of questions mm -hmm. that I get. Yeah, so, uh, and, and you mentioned the word groundbreaking, and no question that what you've got here is groundbreaking. But uh, tell me, you said that you get a lot of questions, so what are some of the typical questions you get when you go I mean, to an event? Great question, but let's back up a minute, because what's groundbreaking about what I'm doing um, is it, gets, it accomplishes the biggest problem in Christianity. You know what that is? It's getting the conversation started mm -hmm. Anytime you want to witness to someone, anyone, anytime you want to talk about any type of Christian content, the hardest part is getting the conversation started. So what I found out immediately was that this sculpture taken from the Shroud of Turin solves that problem because it immediately gets people talking. And the kind of questions that I get, we've already mentioned one, who in the world are you? And the other question is, well, why in the world uh, have you done this? And we kind of address that. It's to help somebody get to heaven. It's to help somebody strengthen their faith. And what if it's a person that tells me something that we hear a good bit? And that is, hey, you know what? I don't need any proof. Because this is what it is. There's so much corroboration between the Shroud of Turin and between this sculpture and the Gospels that it, it's, it's, it's mind-boggling how much corroboration there is. Yeah, exactly. And even John Paul II says uh, this is a mirror, the shroud, and then of course the sculpture is a mirror of the Gospels. Some people it even is a mirror them. of the Gospels. It, it corroborates yeah. the Gospels. And if the, the shroud of Turin is authentic, then this is exactly what our Lord looked like. And that's important. Mm. And what I do when, when somebody tells me, and it happens a lot, people say, well, I don't need any proof. These are strong Christians that say that. And I go, well, you know what? You're blessed. We talked about that in the first two episodes. You're blessed. But I ask them, I turn it back on them, and I say, when's the last time you shared that faith, that strong faith with somebody? Because what I want to do is, is uh, challenge people and motivate people. I love to be challenged myself by somebody that says that or somebody that says, well, I don't believe it's authentic or it may be that it's sinning to look at an image of Christ. Um, the people with the strong faith, I want them with their lips moving about their faith and so I challenge them to do that I love it when I hear that yeah absolutely now there are some uh, there is some resistance to actually having images uh, in church and around church and John Calvin and certainly there's others throughout the years where you had a iconoclasm and uh, the resistance to images tell us about John Calvin and why this then kind of refutes some of his arguments I'll be honest with you I think it's ridiculous and certainly if the Shroud of Turin is authentic, and of course we do believe that it is, that the evidence, the, the circumstantial evidence at least, is overwhelming that it is, then God certainly didn't have a, an issue with leaving an image of his son. Uh, so I kind of think that blows that thinking up altogether. Uh, Calvin also uh, was very much against anything that he considered idolatry. He would, he would not be happy uh, with this sculpture. He would think that it is essentially idolatry. Well, I'll be honest with you. In this day and age, you know what idolatry is? What do we what do we idolize? We idolize this phone. People are all over their phone all day long. And um, I just don't think it's a good argument. Uh, it's certainly something that is worthy of discussion. And I think that uh, especially in a small group 
or a Sunday school, which I love to do those, please invite me to your small group or to your Sunday school class and let's do a deep dive into that because it's a fascinating topic. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you talk about idolatry and yet um, I don't think a Christian would worship this as a, this image, this idol as, a, as, a, as, a, as an idol. I think they, uh, they don't need this. They've already believed. They already have their faith. So then this is just something to uh, kind of make them remember what Jesus did for us and how he suffered so much for us on the cross. Bingo. I'll tell you this, at, at, the, at the Hepzibah, Georgia uh, Fall Festival that I just did uh, a week ago, I had a, a lady that, and there was a, we had a booth, I had a booth, and there was a booth next to me, which was one of the local churches. And, and she walked right by the, the church's local booth. And, because I, I watched her come up, approach. And she stopped at, at my booth and, and looked at uh, the sculpture of Jesus. And she's probably, gosh, she probably spent 30 minutes there. And, and she became emotional. And it wasn't because she was worshiping the sculpture. It was because the sculpture, she wanted to look at it. And she was hurting. Because we're all broken. All of us are broken in some way, shape, or form. And what I found out at, at these events that I go to is that people want to talk, people want to ask why, and then there's a connection made. And that's exactly my goal, is mm -hmm. to connect with people and to talk about their faith and somehow strengthen their faith. She had not been to church um, in probably a decade, I think she said, but I think she's going to start going back. And I think it's because she she was drawn to uh, the sculpture. One for you. Fantastic. I think so. I think so. I think that the questions that, that I get are, are they're across the board to answer your question. I don't get asked uh, if about the shroud being uh, a fake, uh, although certainly there are some people that think yeah. that. I really don't get the questions about, is this sinful, me looking at the sculpture? There, there are a few people that probably think that. I think a lot of pastors were taught that in in school and uh, they're probably worried a lot more worried about it than your average uh, person on the street uh, I don't really see that they really they want to know about me they want to know why in the world I did this mm -hmm. and I tell them that that um, you know that God put me up to it and that I'm trying to be obedient and my goal guy is to talk to uh, to give 10 presentations in one day well, let's talk about that in a second. Let me come back, though. One of the things that I want to relate, and I think this is probably also what you've seen, is when I first saw this image, it made me want to contemplate so much about the Bible, about the Gospels, about what Jesus taught us. When I first saw that image of the shroud, the same thing, when it's laid out, all 14 feet of it, that that value and that, that thinking and that, uh, you know, the contemplation and the... Mel not melancholy, but just kind of that, 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 that feeling that you get when you're in the presence of that image and then now this, shr this shroud uh, and, then, and then this image of, of Jesus is, is just phenomenal. There's that double feeling that you just alluded to. Is that there's one of sadness. There's one of, 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 of some anger as to, a, as to what they did to him. Because, and you certainly can see it. Rhiannon, maybe you might want to pan in a little bit closer on, on, on the wounds, certainly the chest wound. Uh, the wrist there it's, it's hard not to to feel some uh, some sadness and and anger about that but then you become overcome I think most of the time with uh, with joy with look what he did for us look 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 at what he did for us yeah absolutely. And, and that's overwhelming so uh, what are so what are you gonna do for us now you said you are gonna uh, try and combine new technology so that you can bring this image and this likeness to uh, to the world yeah so let's 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 turn um if if people being obsessed with their phone is something that uh is something that the devil's work some people think that it is let's turn it around let's take technology let's take mobile zoom and use that to show people all over the united states and all over the world for that matter the sculpture because you said it uh, in a conversation we had not too long ago is that people need to see the sculpture to have the feelings that we just talked about and so my dilemma is how do I get the most people's eyes on it and certainly I can drive around the southeast and go to any event that 
that uh, where I get invited, uh, and I hope to do, to do that a lot. But it's a lot easier for me, a lot a lot more effective for me to use mobile Zoom on my phone and do uh, an event, a small group, church small group, a church Sunday school, an individual, a family, uh, because we can do uh, a Zoom. Uh, like 40 minutes and if they've got zoom at home or zoom on their phone then uh, they can have a personal viewing of the sculpture they have me to uh, they can pepper me with questions they can challenge me in any way I love to be challenged ask me the toughest questions there are I love it uh, because we have to have answers we have to have an answer if somebody says is it simple to look at an image of Jesus Christ well I've got an answer now you give me 40 minutes and I'll and I'll go into it so what I'm telling people to do, please, is show this video, if you're looking at it, send it to other people, like it on YouTube, Subscribe. comment, ask me to, to come to an event um, in the comments. I'll read the comments, I'll respond. Definitely subscribe to the channel because it's growing, it's gr and it's growing rapidly. And what I wanna do uh, long-term, and it's also a short-term thing, is I want to replicate what I'm doing because it's easy to replicate. I'm looking for people, male or female, who are passionate about talking about Jesus Christ, who are passionate about being a Christian content provider, and who want to be mobile, and who want to kind of copy the model that, that we've come up with here. And I want to put them all over the world. Absolutely. And uh, you know, and that, those are such great next steps. You've got Zooms, you've got mobile. You've got this, this being mobile. Uh, what else? What other things uh, do you think you can do to bring this message and this to uh, other small groups and even work, larger groups? Work myself to death. Because if you can do, and my goal again is to do 10 Zooms in one day. If we get to that, then I'm, the goal is going to go to 11. Um, and, and preferably I'll do that every day. That's, a, that's 10 hours, 12 hours worth of talking. Mm. But you know what? I'm an energizer bunny when it comes to talking. And I think that, that when we get a lot of people doing the exact same thing that I'm doing, then I think we're gonna see a huge impact. Because I've seen that what the reactions from people at events. And I'm, I'm confident in uh, what we're doing. And I want to expand that just as fast as we can and do it in the largest way that we can. And I don't see any reason why we can't build a small army of people that are like-minded that want to use the same strategy over and over and over and this video this youtube that you've done this channel that you've built is a perfect vehicle to get the word out absolutely so before we close any uh, last words any last comments I, I just want people that that see this video to invite me to speak um, at their small group or at their sunday school or at their church or at any event at their home an individual or family or whoever because I like to talk I like to talk about Jesus and one of my friends who's a pastor gave me some great advice on messaging because he knows that I like to build messages and he said whatever message you're building make the answer to this question super easy what has this got to do with Jesus and guy when people see the sculpture and then kind of hear what what I have to say it's pretty obvious what this has got to do with Jesus Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is follow the light, and I, and I recommend that everybody else do that too. If God puts a, a light in your head, run to the light. <laughs> Absolutely. Matt, thank you so much. You know, I don't get to do this in my virtual ones, just to shake the hand of the person that I'm interviewing, but Matt, thank you so much. And with that, that's the, uh, this is the backstory on the Shroud of Turin. Please go to GuyPowell.com to learn more, and definitely, as Matt said, subscribe, comment, reach out, and we definitely can get, hopefully, this sculpture uh, so where you can either see it personally, in person, in the flesh, or even over Zoom. Matt, again, thank you so much. Thanks, John. Thanks, Rhiannon.